Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show Trade Tuesday series. Well, the Sinister Gates is on its way to its new home. Despite getting many different trade offers, ranging from other metally shredder type guitars, all the way to a Les Paul Special that I probably should have traded for it, but in the end, somebody just outright purchased this one. I was asking $549 plus shipping costs, and it eventually sold for $504.20. So after the reverb fees and shipping costs, I was left with $411.20. So to recap, I went from the Glary Strat to the Gibson Case, which sold for money, which I invested into the Kent Bass, which then traded for the Sinister Gates, and now what do we have? Well, how about you come on this trip with me? I kind of like it when I end up selling something within the Trade Tuesday series because I try to use this money to buy something locally. Now, the vintage guitar market, or just guitar market in general in Northwest Ohio, it's not too good, so you don't see a lot of really cool stuff show up, but I got lucky on the Facebook Marketplace. There was a Fender Lead 1 listed by its original owner. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I had never heard of a Fender Lead 1. But looking at it, it reminded me of that Fender Bullet Strat from the 80s that I had reviewed a little while ago. And I loved that guitar, and I thought, oh, that would be great. So I messaged the seller. I had previously offered to trade them the Sinister Gates, which they declined, but this time I came back with my $400 cash offer, and it took the cake. Now, being from the original owner, I definitely wanted to document his stories on the guitar, so follow me as he tells the tale. Case is original. Plays really good. Now, what, what's the story behind those signatures on? These signatures some um, Christian rock bands. That's been about 10 or 15 years ago. And this, this actually hung in the, uh, the youth center at church. And the um, youth minister had the bands sign it. And uh, this band, Kids in the Way, was an awesome band. They played up, all these bands played up to Huber. And they were, they were all good. But this band really stuck out to me because they were the hard rock stuff yeah, so yeah and it was awesome some of them kind of wore off and we we cleaned them off but yeah i can't get the the but the it's really cool it's the only guy i ever heard scream in tune i think they were out of chicago they were all signed by a, a label but the one musician said that so that's what they tell me anyway yeah so you, you were the original owner of it mm -hmm. is there like any backstory behind that or anything no uh, it's the first good guitar I ever I bought I mean I had a bunch of at one time I owned like five guitars I didn't start playing until I was 17 and I was 20 when I bought that nice and uh, do you remember like where you purchased it at yeah in, in Hampton Virginia at a music store it's like a local mom and pop shop type thing well yeah, it was it was not a big store Okay. It wasn't very big. Me and my roommate, we were both in the Air Force, and uh, he took me over there, and I made a trade. I think they got the better end of the deal, but... What did you trade him, do you remember? Oh, well, I tried to trade, but he wouldn't go up high enough. Oh. So I ended up, uh, I only, I paid like 250 bucks for it, but it was like, this, this guitar's like, it's really heavy. I mean... I haven't felt it yet, but yeah. I, I was reading up online. One guy said it was like nine pounds, and it's like, that, that's a lot for a Strat-type guitar. I think it weighs more than nine pounds. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say so. <laughs> Can't wait to get that one out of scale. Set up for nines. Mm -hmm. I took it to Sweetwater. Okay. And had it, uh, they put, over the years, these saddles get, get worn out. So the saddles are new, but everything else is original. I had them put a new nut on it. Okay. 
and they went through the electronics and everything. Everything works. It's got that great vintage sound to it. <laughs> trading series. No, that's so it, fine. It will be traded to someone else, but for another guitar. That's kind of how it builds upon Well, they're getting a nice, yep. that's a nice guitar. You heard the man. This is a nice guitar. So I paid him the agreed upon $400 for this instrument and its original case. Overall, I would definitely say this guitar was in a lot better of condition than I thought it was going to be, judging based on his photos, but I had a great time learning about the history of this guitar and spending some time with the original owner. If you're interested in learning more about the Fender Lead series, I will be continuing this episode on Friday for our Fender Friday episode, as per usual. And in that episode, we'll take a closer look at this one, as well as learn about the four different series within the Lead lineup. So make sure to subscribe today so you don't miss that video. If you think you might be interested in trading me an instrument for this guitar, I'm going to put a $650 trade value on this one. In order to send me a trade offer, please visit the link in the description. Please send some detailed photos as well as a description of the item you're offering. And keep in mind that I cannot pay for shipping costs because I'm trying to treat this series as being a regular Joe. I don't have any extra money to put on top of the guitar. So if you're close by, that might not be an issue, but if you're in California, you're almost looking at 200 bucks between the cost of shipping. So thank you troglodytes for tuning in to this episode of Trade Tuesday, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.